Now, yeah, I know what you're all thinking. Another what's in the bag, surely not. Yeah, because this is quite possibly my third what's in the bag of 2022 and uh, in YouTube land, well, that's pretty much illegal. But I wouldn't be filming this if there wasn't some significant changes that have happened pretty recently, to be honest. And for the most part, those changes, well, they came very much at the top of the bag. Right, I think we should kickstart this video with a kind of, uh, with a big reveal. A new club in the bag, something of real interest. It sits beneath my head cover, can be bought online at theaveragegolfer.co.uk. Enough of me. It's the Tor Edge C721. It's a five hybrid, it's perhaps the more important thing. I finally practice what I've preached in terms of putting this thing in a bag or putting a five hybrid in a bag. It just, first of all, it fills a void in terms of the distance that I'm looking for. So four iron has gone out of the bag, five iron being my longest, this then sits in there. And if I'm honest with you, it's probably not too dissimilar in terms of distance to my five iron. It's a tad further, but it just does the thing, uh, as in gets the ball from A to B in a slightly different way. And if I was ever not in my, on my game, then I'd be certainly looking to reach for a hybrid, this hybrid to help me out, rather than go to my long iron in terms of the five iron. So versatility, again, as ever with a hybrid in the bag, but certainly what I love about this thing is it's given me a real go-to club, plenty of confidence, pops the ball up incredibly high, which I like, can be a negative at times, don't get me wrong, comes down super soft. I can play it from all kinds of lies. Tor Edge C721, the first new club that's gone in the bag this year. Give me another one. Now this is where it all gets a little bit weird because the next club up in my bag from five hybrid jumps up to three wood. Well, sort of three wood. It is in fact this high wood from Cleveland, which has got 18 degrees aloft and it covers a gap it's not a traditional three wood, so if you've not watched the video yet, basically shorter length shaft with a fairway wood. So a hybrid shaft, fairway, wood, and loft, okay? But what it means is I've got a perfect gap in next up, in and around 200, 210, possibly, is what I'm hitting this three wood. So gapping works really well, but more importantly, just how easy it is to play those type of shots. So 210 yards, whether it be from a tight light on the fairway, whether it be off the tee on a par four tight that I'm looking to find a gap. I've just found this such a good club because it's all the things that I talk about. Having great control with shorter shaft, but a bit of uh, stronger loft down there and a bit of uh, size and mass in terms of the head to give confidence. It's just a real confidence booster. And I've got to admit in kind of any situation I've found myself in, I can honestly say, I don't really think I've hit a bad shot with this thing, but it is very, very recently put in the bag. I've had this thing a week or so, so maybe we're just on a bit of a honeymoon. Right, okay, so here's where it all gets weird. Like I said, I have got another 18 degree club in my bag and they perform completely differently indeed. This is possibly my favorite club in the bag right now. It is a five wood, it's a stealth five wood, it's 18 degrees. And like I said, it does totally, it does, it flights the ball totally differently is the first thing. It's a much more powerful, low, more penetrating ball flight. It's longer. I reckon I get 220 out of this thing, maybe just a tad more. And like I said, it offers me up so many different more options or so many more options rather than that of the high wood. But them two coupled together is where I think my bag gets really interesting. If, I'm really, if I'm playing really well and I want to really go after the ball and this is the club to use, I would look at this thing with the longer shaft over the high wood. And like I said, the distance between the two or the difference in distance is surprisingly different. It also sits in nice. If I'm not feeling too good with the driver, it's getting enough distance out of this thing to suggest that uh, I'm not too far behind it at times. And again, that sort of greater control is a big, big deal for me. So uh, yeah absolutely love this thing it's important to say this shaft as it is in the driver has made a huge difference to the stability of my performance i feel anyway here we go but the question is did i stick with stealth first of all and the answer is yes i did very much uh, toss up between Rogue and Stealth this year for me. 
I find this to be a long driver. I'm fairly consistent with it. I'm fairly steady with it. And ultimately, that just breeds a bit of confidence. So yes, we'll get the boring one in many ways out the way because the driver, the Stealth, is still in the bag. It's basically got my fairways in reg up considerably. Right, so that's the top end of the bag done. It's now, uh, where do we go next from, uh, so we've got driver, we've got five wood, then we've got three high wood, then we've got a five hybrid. So where did the iron start, and? And yes, that's right, I am sharing the tee box with a sheep. The woolly custodians, as I like to call them, up here at Hollywell Golf Club, doing a grand job in keeping this tee box trimmed. Anyway, next up in the bag is the irons, and most of you will know, if you watch the channel regularly, that I switched over to the Gen 5 irons just a few months back. Got to say, really, really pleased. The thing I did was I went Gen 5 in the player's model um, from 5 iron through to 8 iron. And then I've got a 9 iron wedge and gap wedge in the tour model. The tour model just being a slightly shorter, smaller rather, profile. And uh, they just, again, tick every box for me. Really, really forgiving. I'm happy to play that sort of 5 iron. I'm prepared to go down to that 5 iron in the bag as the longest iron. Plenty of help and meat in there, carries around sort of, I've got about a 185 shot in that five iron. And then when it gets down to the short end of the bag, those nine wedge and gap wedge, I just like the extra sort of, um, well, just that smaller profile, just exactly what I wanted to try and do. A little bit more finesse down that bottom end. And again, happy to play those from sort of any kind of situation. And like I said, the interesting thing for me though, this time round was for the first time, five iron, is the longest iron I've got in the bag. Sit down, sit down, get in, get in. Oh my word, and it nearly did, right on cue, because next up it's wedges. And these wedges actually featured in my last what's in the bag. I pretty much put them in straight away. They are the Ping Glide 4. And I've got to say, like I said, they went in the bag straight away. I love them. And as you can see, I'm pretty comfortable putting these uh, into all kinds of situations. And whether that be a chip and run, whether that be putting the ball up in the air, whether it be playing from bunkers, I'm carrying the 54 and the 58, which is direct follow on from that 50 degree gap wedge that I've got in the irons. Perfect gapping. But the real thing I like about these I've gone for that wider sole. I've gone for that option with plenty of bounce. So 14 on the 58, and I think it's 10 on that 54. And it's just been a massive help. I've been a big advocate, a big fan of putting plenty of bounce. These wide soles have been such a great help to me. And there's some of the chips you see me play. have not been fantastic. Maybe almost a little bit of ground before ball, but that bounce just seems to help me just a little bit and it still gets that ball popped up a little bit and stops me stubbing into the ground. However it uh, becomes effective, it is a big help. And then that 58 in bunkers with the bounce again is just a big help. And the feel out of these things is really good as well in a fairly compact head size. So they tick every box for me. And without doubt, I'm really pleased with the way my wedge situation has lined up. The fact that this club ends up being the sort of last announcement in the what's in the bag sort of suggests it's where it sits in the pecking order. And I think that's been a big mistake by me in the last few years. And it is, of course, the putter. And what I've done is, as I said in previous videos, test so many uh, different products that I've always got a different club in the bag. And what I'm trying to do is just stabilize all that a little bit and play with one putter in particular every time I go out. And I've settled back for this sort of tool on Las Vegas. It's a class looking putter, first of all. The, just the sort of, the engineering, the visual element of it, it just looks really, oh, it's just superb. Fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. And like I said, I played with it early part of the year as soon as it came out. Then we started testing other putters and I drifted away. But I'm back to this and I'm really good at judging sort of pace with it. As you can see from this putt here, just one roll from dropping in. But then from the shorter stuff as well, I like the alignment aid, it gives me confidence. And uh, as we all know, that uh, the, 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 my favorite saying is no magic wands and uh, they don't help you put the ball in the hole. And uh, let's see if I can just, well, we're getting near the end of this video. Let's see if we can roll one in. Big swing, big ask. It's gonna turn enough. Not quite enough, but what I like about it, it sets it off on the line that I aimed. And again, just maybe just a tad too much pace. But when you miss like that, you've got no arguments. The, the issue I've had for the last few 
years probably is just sitting with something at a dress and being really confident that I've got it aligned to the target that I've chosen and uh, with this it's a very simple and effective setup and so far so good and like I said more importantly I've got to stick with it. So that is my what's in the bag complete for 2022 and I sincerely hope that that is my uh, last video that I film. But you know me, I do like to tinker a bit, but I genuinely think that I've got a great setup there right throughout the bag. The important thing for me is it's all about confidence is the key element. And I would say that with every club that I've got in the bag right now, I have got exactly that. I'm confident in the tools that I've got and therefore I've got no excuses. When I stand over the ball, I feel like it can execute the shot. And uh, well, what more can you ask for with those yardages dialed in as well? It's pretty much a decent setup. Some stars in there are definitely this high wood and the five hybrid have been great additions. The five wood is an absolute rocket launcher. I love the steadiness and feel of the irons and everything that they provide. Uh, yeah, pretty happy right now. Anyway, video very much keeping you up to date as to what's going on. Give me your feedback on what you think in terms of how I've put that bag together. And also let me know how yours is coming together this year. Any new products have found their way into the bag as yet. As ever, thank you for watching and uh, I really do appreciate all your support on this channel and I'll see you all very soon.